Why did he know he could rest in that? Because of the second secret to being content in all things. And the second secret, the secret is he is a good father. Full stop. End of the story. There's no other truth but that he is good. Paul understood that just like Job came to understand that by the end of the book of Job. Paul understood. Paul goes, these are all my sufferings. And I can boast in them because he is good. I don't need to understand his plan, just like Job said at the end of the book of Job. He's like, who am I to even question? Who am I to think I could ever even understand the ways of God? Paul is saying, not my job. I'm his, that's all I need to know. And two, the only other thing I need to know, it's very simple, but yet very hard to walk out. It's simple, he's good. And we right now, at the beginning of 2019, guys, we need to decide right now, is he good? We don't get another option. Like, we've got to decide, is he good or is he not good? Very, very simple choice, black and white, good or not good. We have to decide right now because the longer we go on not deciding that and not holding every circumstance of our life, good, bad, and ugly, to that, the longer we go on not deciding is he good, then the easier we are to be pulled into disappointment, pulled into hope deferred, pulled into compromise, pulled in to things that are not the fullness of what God has for us. Essentially, the longer we go on not deciding whether he's good or if he's not good, we've got to make that decision today. Because the longer we go on not making that decision, the easier it is for us to be pulled into essentially erecting our only, our own golden calf of deceit. And I did this. Many of you know, my husband and I were on a long journey through infertility, almost seven years being unable to conceive a child. And outside of wanting to live the fullness of Christ, the dream to have children was basically the only other dream I've had in my entire life. And so to be able to not be able to be a mother, it left me more raw than I can even probably communicate. Some of you listening have, are dealing with infertility or have dealt with infertility and you know exactly that rawness. There, you, there aren't even words for it. And for seven years, and I did everything I could to just, you are good, God, you are good. But instead of following the first principle of going, I am his, therefore I can take everything to him and just dump it on him and be like, yours to sort out, God, because I'm your kid. I'm your kid. And right now your daughter feels like she's being bullied and left out on the street. What are you going to do about it? Because if you're a good father, what are you going to do about it? Instead of doing that, which is what I should have done, because he's big, Psalm, the Psalms of David tell us that I can rant, I can kick, I can moan, I can groan. He's going to, he's going to help me. 